welcome to our interview. Thanks, Jim. Just tell us a little bit about um, you know yourself, your background with Skinny Fish Music, and uh, I guess the philosophy of your company as a music company. Um, well, I'm the one of the co-founders of Skinny Fish Music. Uh, we started in 1999 in uh, the Northern Territory. Our uh, total roster up until about two years ago was all Indigenous musicians. We've since signed an East Timorese artist um, in the last couple of years. So, you know, basically for the last 12 years we've been working with artists largely from the Northern Territory, but not exclusively, uh, in developing uh, them and their recordings and, and uh, you know, getting, I guess, uh, a, a group of people who uh, have no real access to the music industry, giving them a, a means to, you know, access, access the music industry. Um, and of course, in the last few years, we've had incredible success with Gurumul Yunapingu, who uh, was with Yothi Indi and then started with Saltwater Band and then now is doing his own stuff. Essentially, the, our business model is a little bit unique in that we're two white fellas and we work totally with uh, Indigenous musicians. Our, our entire roster, as I said, with, our, with the exception of Ego Lemos, uh, is an Indigenous roster. There's no other record label in the country, I think, that has that, that roster. Uh, there's, you know, and a, part of the obligation, I guess, with having that roster is that we have to also have uh, what we see as a very strong community development focus. So it can't be just about the artist and about our relationship with the artist, it's also about our relationship with their community. So, you know, part of what we've set out to do is to create economic activity for those remote communities through their artists. Um, and, you know, not in our wildest dreams did we ever think that we would have a success like Gorimals, which is now double platinum in Australia. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. There's myself, who knows nothing about music, and there's uh, Michael Honan, who's the, as we call it, the A&R department at Skinny Fish. He's a highly credentialed musician. He played with a Melbourne band, the Killjoys, back in the 80s, who had some moderate uh, success. I think we were signed to Mushroom at the time. So he, you know, he and I met in the late 90s and, um, you know, developed this idea of a record label in the Northern Territory. I know you've done a, a number of releases over the time that the record label's been running. Yeah. And I would assume that in most of those instances you're aiming for a fairly moderate level of uh, take up from yeah. the community and more often than not from the local community. Yeah. Were you prepared for the level of sales that you received and the, and the response from the wider community in the world for uh, Gurumul? For Gurumul, not at all. In fact, when we released that album, well, we actually got physical copy, copies of it in, uh, now I just have to check my dates here, but I think it was December 07, we, we got physical copies. We officially released it in February 08. Uh, and when we released it, we uh, had sort of penciled in that we would hope that it would sell 5,000 copies by the end of that calendar year. By the end of October in that year, it had gone platinum. Uh, so it, it was a total surprise to us. You know, we, we were looking at 5,000 copies and it had sold in, in excess of 70,000 within seven months. So uh, we were lucky though in that we had, this was the first album in which we, uh, there was a few things that came together. We just, Previously that year signed a, um, an administration deal with Sony ATV. We decided for this album to put on a public relations person. So everything was in place uh, for it to be successful, even though we weren't thinking, uh, you know, the current sales are nearly 200,000. So we weren't thinking those sort of figures. We were thinking 5,000 and hopefully get some good PR off what we thought was a fantastic album. And so, yeah, we were completely taken by surprise. It was... Um, and, and you know, I still say today that that I think uh, when you look back in ten years' time on the history of the Australian music industry, I think that album will stand out because uh, you know you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's any other album 
any other Australian album that hasn't been sung in English by an Indigenous artist that has been so successful. Even the Yothi Indi uh, releases, the big songs on, the, on those albums were largely in English. So, you know, it's a, it's a phenomenal uh, success for us, for the artists, but more importantly, I think it's a phenomenal success for the Australian community to actually embrace uh, something like that. The styles of music across Indigenous Australia is incredibly diverse. You know, you can go from a traditional artist who, who uses a didgeridoo and clapsticks to Troy Cassadaly. So, there, in, and in between, there's everything. There's every style of music. I think that uh, in terms of what we try to do, and all of the artists say to us that, that in fact they want people to accept their music before they accept them as Indigenous artists. That's the, that's the thing that comes time and time and time again. They want to compete and they want, to, they want their style of music to be respected along with other performers who perform the same sort of style of music. They want to be accepted as performers first. So I think, uh, you know, there's some thinking, and it's been around for a while, and I know one of the, the big festivals in uh, New South Wales that happens at Easter time, and I won't, won't mention the festival, but they've got an Indigenous stage. Now, to me, that's the wrong way to go because it doesn't do any favours to Indigenous artists. What it says to the, all the punters, all the mainstream punters that come here, come to that festival, it says there's a stage over there that has nothing to do with quality. We're just putting it on because our oh, poor things, they won't get a go on the main stage, so let's give them a go on a side stage. And the intention is always, you know, you can't fault people's intention in, in giving any artist a go, but really it ghettoises Indigenous artists. It, it puts them in a position where the average punter says that's not good enough. It's away over there in the corner, it's hidden away, they can't get a gig on the main stage, it's not good enough. So in terms of, of you know, you're talking about uh, mainstream platforms, the music has got to, f got to be performed and accepted where that genre of music would normally be performed and accepted. And we need to get away from the idea, I think, of, of singling Indigenous artists out and going, they need extra help. Because all that does is, uh, is really sends the wrong message to the marketplace completely. And it gives everyone an excuse to ignore them. So it has the uh, you know, counterproductive um, so, effect. So do you then come to Big Sound as an event? not only with your uh, music hat and label hat and management hat of I'm going to do something for my artists, but I guess with a, another message uh, on top of that, which is beyond just the industry lag that we talk about. Oh yeah, look, you know, it's a, with us, because all of our artists are indigenous and, and even, you know, we talk about Ego Lemos, he comes from a third world country, comes from one of the poorest countries uh, you know, certainly in the Asia Pacific region. So we we come to a place like Big Sound, and we talk about our artists like any record label would talk about their artists. the The difference is that we also talk about our social responsibility to them and their communities. We also talk about the difficulties that uh, we have, which are uh, are directly linked with us working with Indigenous artists and them coming from remote communities. You know, Skinny Fish Music's probably the, the most isolated record label in Australia. We're, uh, you know, closer to Asia than we are to Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane. There's no infrastructure in uh, the Northern Territory really in terms of a music industry. So the, the issues that we have with Indigenous artists are their remoteness, is their distance from the marketplace, is, and it's the old tyranny of distance. We can't just bring a band down to do a pub gig in Brisbane, for instance. Um, and, you know, a few years ago we bought a, a band to... Well, there were three bands from the Territory that came and played for um, the Queensland Music Festival. Now, those three bands did two or three showcases, but that was a $30,000 operation to bring those three bands here. So. You know, as I say, with Saltwater, you know, they're, they're a sensational band. They've sold over 30,000 albums across Northern Australia. They very rarely play outside of Northern Australia. And to, for me to get them here to Brisbane is a $20,000 travel 
fee, a travel cost. So no one's going to book salt water. No one in, on the, in their right mind is going to book salt water because there's no money to be made out of them unless they've got a following. So, you know, for us, the, the, the key issue about the fact that we deal with Indigenous artists is that they don't live in Darwin. They live 500, 600, 1,000 kilometres out of Darwin. So to get them to the starting point, which is Darwin, to get to fly anywhere, there's $10,000 straight away. So, you know, that's, that's the issue, I guess, that, that you know, you can, you can put down as being the Indigenous issue, if you like, for uh, those guys that we work with. Look, I, Big Sound's fantastic for us because we live, in an, we live in isolation. And sometimes when you live in isolation, you, get, you can get a distorted view of the outside world, if you like, from where you sit. So coming to Big Sound allows us to reconnect with the industry. But it also allows us to say to everyone, wait a minute, when you talk about Australian music, then we've got the most Australian music of all, and that uh, if we're all going to go down the Australian music path, let's all go down together. <laughs>